about the meantime, and we have said the meantime is the time uh, during what? You see, you, you, you now forgot. The meantime is the time to, is, is during the time before something happens. Amen. And all of us, we're going to go through a season of a time before something happens. Amen. That is the meantime. And we have said the meantime is mean. It's the meantime. The meantime can squeeze life out of you, and the meantime can squeeze faith out of you. And we said the meantime is the same time. It means at the same time. It means there are multiple things happening at the same time. So never be only consumed by what you can see with, with your naked eyes, because in the meantime, at the same time when something is happening, something else is happening. Amen. Amen. And we said the meantime talks about a period, a set period of time that needs to come to an end. So the meantime is that period of time. L think of it as the time it takes for a cake to be baked. If the cake were to be taken out of the oven before the fulfillment of the time period that is set for the baking of the cake, then that cake cannot be said it's good. It cannot be good. We read the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, for everything there's a time. And it is talking about a set time. And when it talks about time, we know that the Bible talks about chronos, say chronos. Say chronos. It talks about the chronology of time, which means the ticking of the clock. And sometimes as Christians, we want to disregard the clicking of the clock, but it is the chronosis of life that fulfills or brings forth the kairos moments of life. Amen. Amen. For a woman needs to be pregnant for a set time. Say a set time. A woman needs to be pregnant for a set time. And that set time is the chronos. It's a period that can be weighed and measured. Yeah. It is called nine months. Yeah. It's a set time. Yeah. But then in the set time, a chronos will appear when the time is fulfilled. That's what they call pleremo, which means the fullness of time. Yeah. So when the Bible says for everything there's a time, it's talking about everything. It's talking about there's a season. It's talking about there's a time. It's talking about there's a set time. And it's also talking about there's time fulfillment that needs to happen. You, you see, the teacher in me is begging for your attention. And it's begging for you to grasp what I'm trying to say. So when you are in the first trimester, it looks like you are caught in the chronological time. But as you go through the chronology, you are fulfilling. Say fulfilling. Ugwalisa isikati. You are fulfilling the set time so that you can come to a season that is called the fullness of time. Amen. And then when the fullness of time has come, you have happened upon a season of time. Amen. That's why the Bible says, ask for rain in the season of rain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, are you hearing it? It means uh, allow yourself when we wake up early in the
the morning, we set a clock. The clock is set in the chronology of time. But then we have an appointment with the divine. The one that doesn't live under time. And we are bringing issues that are under time. But we understand that when heaven meets with earth, chronos happens. But then if you don't keep your chronological time, you might even miss the kairos moment. Because if a pregnant woman doesn't carry the child to ten, it is not a good thing because everything is good in its own time. So we need to learn to handle the meantime. Because in the meantime, we are doing multiple things. We are fulfilling the time that is set. Because yesterday, okay, you, when, you are not where you were yesterday. You have walked a distance. And, and surely you are closer to where God is taking you. Because you have fulfilled what is required from you in the meantime. So the meantime is not a time of inactivity. It's a time of heightened awareness. Because you know that your waking up is not just a waking up. That's why we read the book of Habakkuk 2 when he says, I will stand my watch. He, he says, I will keep my appointment with God. I will keep my appointed time with God. And I will see what he will say because God is faithful in the fullness of time. He will reward us. Are, are you hearing me? So we need to know how to handle the meantime. The meantimes are the times of in-betweens. You are in between. You are between places. You are between things. You are between people. It's a mixture. But then in the word meantime, there's an instruction of waiting. The meantime is an attitude. The meantime requires you to have an attitude of rest. You rest in the knowledge that you have of who your God is. You rest because you know that even though you don't see it, he's working. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. When you read the first scripture, it says young men grow weary. Even, it says even young men grow weary. And then it introduces a but. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. So there is a waiting that is required in order for you to be able to handle the meantime. And most of us, we don't like the word wait. We don't like it. But there's a waiting that is required every day. Christian must go through a season of waiting. Amen. So the word wait is, is, is that word that talks, it also talks about uh, wait, waiting like a waitress does. It talks about service that in your meantime be a servant. Amen. Wait on the Lord. When they say wait on the Lord, they say wait, trust for him. Give him your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Bring him your worship. Wash his feet with your tears. It's a season of waiting. So the meantime requires you to have that ability to wait. And to wait with a, a, an attitude of rest. 
It is not talking about restlessness, but then it is talking about quietness, a quiet spirit in the midst of the storm. That you know that the storms are hitting, but there's a quietness. That's why the Bible calls it a peace that surpasses human understanding. What distinguishes us in our meantime is how we wait. Our wait ability. Most Christians don't have it. We want instant gratification. We want it now. We even sing about it and say, when? Now? Right now? Right now? And then us saying now, 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 now doesn't even make the time move quicker. The trying of our faith has to produce something. It has to produce something. So that word weight is that word perimeno. And that word perimeno is the word all around. Peri. That word peri means all around. And then this word is trying to show you the intensity of the storms hitting against the promise of the word that you have hidden in your heart. It's an all around hitting. But then the Bible says, wait. And I said to you, the word wait is an instruction. It's the instruction, stay. Stay. The Bible says he keeps him in perfect peace. The one whose mind is stayed on him. Stay. Mavaganing, what happens when, the, when that perimeno happens? They're all around. We become shaken. The Bible says when the storms of life came, when, when it says when the storms, it, it, it assures you that the storms of life will come. It's not if the storms of life come. It says when. It says when the storms of life came. They hit against this thing that you were building. And then you, you, you got uh, swept away. Waiting is about endurance. Say endurance. endurance. And then endurance. What, what is endurance uh, talking about? It's talking about putting up with surrounding difficulties. There's no endurance without uh, surrounding difficulties. How, how, how is your weight ability? How is it? We are was uglinda. So that word, uh, 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 weight is, 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 is the word do not live. How many of us are ready to live? I'm paying amen. Even if you don't mean it, just say amen. Just say hi, amen. How, how, how many of us have uh, the ability not to live? How many times have we said it with our mouths, even our marriages? Really, amen. The threat to live. But then wait means do not live. It means do not live. But most of us, we have threatened God with living because we don't have wait ability. We are like, hi, if it doesn't happen, I'm living. We have given God, what, what do they call it, an ultimatum. But then God doesn't work. What's about the problem with God is that he knows that he is God. That's his problem. You can't threaten him. 
He just says to you, do not leave. Tell the person sitting next to you. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 4 says, do not leave but wait for the gift. Amen. 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 You cannot wait for the gift and leave at the same time. So, that's why we said a double-minded person will never receive anything. It double-mindedness means is will but What? Yeah. But Yeah, but then it means there's a line, but one of your feet is this side and the other one is that side. You see? You cannot wait for the promise and live at the same time. Most of us, our hearts have left long ago. So humble. Your heart have left God a long time ago. But then you can't wait and live at the same time. So the instruction in Acts 1, 4 says, wait for the promise. The book of Habakkuk 2, it says, the vision is for an appointed time. It, it is for a set period. Likona ilanga elibegelwe istembiso. Siga ngulungulu. Uguti si peza gaya. Empilwe niyako. So wait for the promise. It says even though it tarries, it will not prove wrong. It awaits an appointed time. It awaits the fullness of time. It awaits a kairos moment in your life. So wait for the promise. Amen. So do not leave means wait. Wait, stay around the promise. Stay around the promise. When God says, in healing, I will heal you. Stay around the promise. Don't come with new doctrines. Don't come with new belief systems. When you are thinking, I mean, uh, Stay around the promise. That's why, remember all the scriptures we, we, we are talking about. That's why Habakkuk encourages himself, Ari, I will keep my watch. He means I will stay in the vicinity. I will keep on making my appointment. Come five o'clock, I wake up. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of how what has happened yesterday, I will keep my watch. I will stay around the promise. Instabilities and inconsistencies are a result of your lack of waitability. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm, I'm down. You are inconsistent because you don't know how to wait. When we wait, we keep the appointment in the calendar until we fulfill the time required, the time it takes. Ecclesiastes 10, somebody's hearing me. Verse 4, it says, if the ruler's tempest or the ruler's temper flares against you. Is that where the peri meno, all around waiting? It says, when the ruler's temper flares against you, we understand that it temper. It says, when the ruler's temper flares against you, do not ab abandon your post. Stay. What's the report that you have heard about the church? What has it done to your heart of hearts? 
There are things you were convicted. You, 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 you know, sometimes you must bring yourself to remembrance. Remember the day you entered this door for the first time. Remember the encounters you had with God. Remember that thing that said to you, this is the place that you need to be. It says, and when the ruler's temper flares against you, do not abandon your post. Your post where God posted you. You cannot live and wait at the same time. Amen. Today's sermon. I want us to go to the book of Psalms 16, verse 11. It says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forever. I want to make you understand that you can only wait in the presence. When there's no presence, where, where the presence of God is not there, you can't wait. You can't take it. Are you hearing me? The only way, way to wait on the Lord is to wait on him. Remember the waiting I was talking about. The only way you can wait on the Lord is when you are preoccupied by waiting on him. By serving him. In the presence of God, you show me the path of life. In the presence of God, you show me the path when you are outside the presence, you can't see the way of life. It will be doomsday every day. We will begin to say things like, it doesn't rain. It pours. We will say things like, all hell has broken loose. When hell breaks loose, the only thing you need to be concerned about is the presence is the presence of God. If God is present, that, that, that's why the Bible says, where will I go away from your presence? If I make my bed in hell, you are there. Yeah. So when God is there with you in the hell that you are going through, you need not to worry. Yeah. All you need to do is to entertain his presence. Yeah. We go back to, Lord, show me your glory. We go back to, we seek his face, not his hand. Because when his face is present, we can go through hell and back, and we shall not fear. Because his presence reassures us. Amen. Amen. When, 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 when we read the, the word of God, it talks about Paul and, and, and Silas. It's in the book of Acts 16. Can we start showing scriptures or something? NIV. It, it, it says, and about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. It says they were praying. They were keeping their appointment with God regardless of where they were and regardless of what was happening. Some of us, we don't show up for a prayer meeting. Listen, what is your prayer meeting? Who are you meeting with? Is it your prayer meeting with me or is your prayer meeting with you and your God? So we have excuses of why we are not keeping the appointment that we have with God. Some of us can simply say, oh, I woke up late and we don't mind it. Amen. But the Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Midnight in the Bible, it signifies the darkest hour of life. 
When they talk about midnight, it means in the midst of darkness. Evening is a time of an even light. The sun is still there. It has not set and the moon is also there. It's a mixture of light, but night is a darkness, but midnight is the mist of the night. The Bible says Paul and Silas were praying. What is like, like what are you doing in your meantime? What are you doing? Are you complaining? Are you changing your confession? Are you reducing your expectation? Most of us, we have altered the plan that God has given us because we are looking of, at, at what is happening around us. In the year to the plan, we, most of us, we have a building plan. And then, before we start, we alter it. Because we have consulted with the quantities of air. And the quantities of air tells you, but hey. <laughs> and you are like, no, we don't need a pool, cancer. Okay? But then the Bible says, in the midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. To God. Nyabon, Tina, Abantam Yama Sitanda Abo Bawo, Tiko Samandra, Buinto Nubu Penyaba. You don't know that song. You have sung it. Even sometimes you have sung it in your heart, in the back of your mind. Ganti Sanza. <laughs> but the Bible says they were singing hymns to God. They were not singing about their trouble. They were not talking about what was happening. They were saying, how great are you, O God Almighty. They were saying, praise be unto God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because they knew that they are between places. It is the meantime of their lives. It's crunch time. They were not accusing God of anything. They were not saying, Why, where were you? Tina Senzeni, Sia Shumayela. The, the, the Bible says they sang, they, yes. Hey, even every pastor has a moment in their meantime where they feel going to sing, sing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the Bible says suddenly there was such a violent earthquake Let's read it. It says, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Acts 16.25, Bazalwan. He was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had ex escaped. But Paul and Silas shouted, what did they shout? Do not harm yourselves. We are all here. Let's say we are all here. Say we are all here. Say I am stayed. They say don't harm yourself. We are all here. How many of us would have jumped at the opportunity to get out of the door because we will say it is God that has shaken the foundations. It is God that has broken the chains. And we don't care about the fullness of time. We don't even ask ourselves what time it is. But we say to ourselves the chains are broken and the door is open. I'm out of here. But the Bible says Paul and Silas were interested in the word of God. In the word of God, in God's time, in God's 
God's time. God says everything is good in its own time. There must become a people. There must be a people who are interested in God's timing. That we don't just do it because we can do it. But we ask ourselves, what time is it? And the Bible says, they said, do not harm yourself. We are all here. Are there people who are willing to go through what they are going through one more day? Even when they see a window of opportunity opened for them to escape. Tina, we say, as long as I come out, I don't care whether I have fulfilled the fullness of time. You are like that half-baked cake. That becomes a waste of ingredients. Because the same ingredients that are used in a cake that stands the fullness of time are the same as the ingredients that we used in the cake that did not stand the test of time. The taste is in the pudding. Amen. Amen. Just say, I hear you, Lord. So most of us, the door, when the door opens, we say, thank you, Jesus. And we don't care about the word of God. The Bible says, he said, we are all here. Don't harm yourself. Because God had an appointment with the jailer through Paul and Silas. He wanted to show himself alive. So when we are not consumed by the meantime, we focus on the agenda of heaven. Why have you sent me here, Lord? They were waiting for the when of God. Are you waiting for the when of God? Or are you going to come out at the first chance that you have? I'm talking about the fairness of forging. The fire that is meant to purify your heart. Because most of us, our businesses have gone through the fire. Because... It is the fire of purification. It's a purification of the intentions of the heart. Amen. Amen. But then the Bible says they waited. They say don't harm. They waited. They waited. And the Bible says a, a word was sent. But you know, let them go. And then Paul said, no, 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 no. We are not about to come out silently. When you brought us here, you arrested us in front of everybody. So even now, when we go out, you will take us out, out of everybody. Amen. We need to wait for the word of God. Most of us have invested everything that we have in the kingdom. We have invested everything. But we are about to be tripped by the meantime because we don't know God's when. You see, when you are pouring something in the cup and somebody says to you, I will tell you when. All you need to do is pour. You don't know when they will say when. But then when they say when, that will become the when. Are, are you hearing? We need to have an obedience. That allows God's when. It is God that will send the fourth man in the fire. In the fiery furnace. And it is God that will say when. It is God that will say now is the time for you to come out. Don't take yourself out before time. Because you, you lack timing. And you don't understand the when of God. Our hope is in the promise of the word. And we need to have a conv conviction that God knows when. God knows what time it is. And he knows when. Let's say God knows when. He shall food is it when. God knows when. He knows when. And that needs to be your conviction. 
He knows when. He knows the date of your marriage. Amen. He knows when. Amen. So the word when talks about timing. I get it. It talks about timing. The when. But then the word when also, it talks about uns- uncertainty. It's like when. Nini. Nini. Yeah, but it also talks about, but the word when also talks about promise. It says when. When you pass through the waters. It's an appointed place of meeting with God in his timing. He says, when this happens, this is what I will do. So when also talks about the promise. Langutwa. Langutwa. Wangutwa. Manes It says when you pass. So that word when it's it's also is is also talking about the promise. There shall come a time when you pass through the waters. And when the passing through the waters happens, you must bring yourself to remembrance that the waters will not sweep me. Because I have an appointment with God in the passing of the waters. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew 24. Open your Bibles. I think they have a problem with their screens. Matthew 24, verse 46. Matthew 24, verse 46. Let's use NIV. It, it says, read there. What does it say? It will be. Read the scripture, Bazalwan, verse 46. Okay, wake up. Okay, it says, Blessed is that servant whose master finds him doing. Let's, let's say that. Let's say, Blessed is the servant whose master finds him doing. The, the, the master, Mabati, the master finds you. It, 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 um, it is suggesting that the master had gone somewhere. And the master wants you to master the meantime while he's gone. Because the, the meantime is important. Because the master is not a slave driver. He doesn't want to be there every day telling you what to do. He says, blessed is the servant whose master finds him doing. Finds him doing. When, when that word doing is the word abiding. It's the word journeying. It's the word agreeing. It's the word continuing with what you have agreed with God. Blessed is the master, blessed is the servant whose master will find him praying. Blessed is the servant whose master will find him believing. Blessed is the servant whose master will find him waiting. Blessed is the servant whose master will find him agreeing. Mother, most of us, the master will find us having departed. Remember the word depart means to separate yourself. To move from the promise and the place of waiting. Put in your hand by me. Oh no. Oh, the master finds you sitting like the servant who hid the talent. The scripture is talking about the same parables. He finds you taking everything he has entrusted in your hand. You put it, you dug a hole and you placed it in. And you said, I know you are a wicked person. You want to harvest where you did not work. So I took what you have given me and I hid it. The Bible says, so when he returns, say he returns. 
It says when he returns, I'm saying to you, the Lord is, is going to show himself true. He will prove himself true to all of his promises. His word shall not return to him void. It shall accomplish every purpose it was sent out for. And the Bible says he will return. Amen. Every word will meet its mate. There will be a partnering. Every word will meet its mate. There will be no word that shall remain unmarried. Every word will meet its partner. Every promise will meet fulfillment. And the Bible says when that happens, blessed are you if he finds you doing. Hey, listen, God is not a man that he can lie. Nor a son of man that he can change his mind. What he promised is surely going to come to pass. But what separates you is that when it comes to pass, how will he find you? By the time your answer comes, what will be the state of your heart? Inning year to when the fulfillment of the promise happens, it will find us having departed from the place where God has set us. Uyo pola se wonile. Uyo pola se imalia ko itli wenga maskems. So when he returns, he returns to the place of waiting. It can't be called return unless there's an appointed place. It doesn't say when he meets you again. He says when he returns to the place of waiting. So confused. What are people saying about your testimony? Are they saying, oh, this used to be such a joyful person, but now you have become bitter. You are Mara. You have changed your name. And when the Lord returns, he, he finds you in a, in, a, in a changed state. It says 48, but suppose that servant is wicked. Let's read the Bible. Suppose that servant is wicked and says in his heart, my master will be away for a long time. The key word there is long time. Because I'm talking about God's when. Who has the right to say when God should do what he wants to do? Who can measure the timing of God? Who has the ability to call God's timing a long time? The Bible says that is called wickedness. And that word wickedness is the word kakos. is the word that means the rot in your heart. Uguti, when you don't wait how God wants you to wait, you will have rotting. Uzoba no gubo la paga ten kizwe niya kontele amen la pente. So we need to be conscious. Uguti, we can't tell God that He's been away too long. Amen. God is never late. He's never early. He's always on time. Amen. God does all things in the right time. Let's say that. Believe it with me. He does all things at the right time. His timing is perfect. Amen. Amen. Ah, Psalms 13. I want us to, to read this uh, verse. And we go into close. Psalms 13, verse 1 to 3. Uh, I have so much, I can't, I can't finish. Uh, Psalm 13, verse 1 to, uh, to 3, it says, how long? Yeah, that's a topic for the director of Psalms, of David. Okay, the verse starts, how long? How long? Let's say, how long? how long? Amen. So David felt like how we feel. He says, how long will you forget me? It says, it, it's a double negative there. It says, how long will you forget me forever? Is this how we want to approach God? 
He says, how long? This is the fear of being forgotten. All Christians sometimes in their lives, they feel like they are forgotten. They feel like God has turned his back on him. But listen, all we have is the promise of his word. He says, never. It's the answer to this, how long? He said, never. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. But I will abide with you until the end of time. Never. So don't, don't suffer from the fear of being forgotten. Rejoice when you see other things happening for other people because you are not forgotten. God knows your name. God knows your address. God knows what time it is. Amen. Do not allow the enemy to whisper in your ear and say you are forgotten. So he says, how long? Verse 2 says, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Amen. That's, that's the questions of anxiety. Anxiety has multiple questions. Anxiety. But the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. In all things, just make your request known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses human understanding will begin to guard your heart and your mind because God is at work. There are questions of anxiety. Anxiety can question, hey, how am I going to die? Am I also going to die? Am I also going to die poor? Am I going to die without getting married? Will I ever have a child? These are questions of anxiety. You are wrestling with thoughts. But that's not what God requires. He says he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. You need to say to certain thoughts, stay. You need to say to certain things, peace, be still. You need to quiet the storm in your mind and say, peace, be still. Amen. The fear of missing out. There's a fear of missing out. Questions of anxiety and the fear of missing out. You are feeling like it's happening for everybody except for me. You are like Elijah. He says, all are dead. I'm the only one who's left. You are about to kill yourself because of misconception. All these things are questions of anxiety. But God is calling you to rest. To have a weightability. Unalibu ho ni na bako emela mudimu. 